Hey guys, in this video, I'm gonna take you through everything you need to know to mix epoxy perfectly for your project. I'm gonna take you through all of it, from hot and cold and measuring well and safety, and do I drill mix or do I use a stir stick? What container do I use? Don't worry, we're gonna go through all of it step by step. Let's jump right in. Let's start with some key principles that apply to every type of mixing that you're doing, regardless of container or drill or paddle. These three things are important to keep in mind. Number one is measuring well. Our epoxy is one to one by volume. That means you're not gonna use a gram scale or anything to measure those things out. You're gonna put equal parts by volume. That's where things like a graduated measuring cup really come in handy. These are really good. I would definitely consider one. Pro tip for you, looking on the inside of the cup to see where you're at measurement wise is a little bit easier. Sometimes lights on the outside of the cup can play tricks on your eyes, cast some weird shadows. Looking on the inside just as a double check is a good idea. If you don't measure well, if you don't end up with equal parts by volume, you can have some bad results. Maybe the epoxy won't cure fully or cure well. You won't necessarily have the, the heat deflection temperature that's promised in there, and you're gonna end up with a weird mixed viscosity. Your part in your project, not gonna come out the way you want them to. All right, key principle number two, scraping the bottom and the sides. When you're mixing epoxy, you have two sides. You have the hardener and you have the resin. Our case, the A side, that's our resin. The B side, that's our hardener. Those two things combining is what gives you that final epoxy. Now, when you're pouring into a graduated cup, you're gonna have some stuff on the walls and some stuff on the bottom of the cup as well. It's really important that you scrape the sides, that you scrape the bottom with whatever mixing utensil you're using to make sure all of it's combined. Otherwise, your mix ratio is gonna be off. So no matter what you're doing, you're gonna make sure you wanna scrape the sides, and scrape the bottoms, and get all of both side A and side B combined. All right, the last key principle is a consistent mix. This is huge. If you don't thoroughly mix everything, you're not gonna end up with the cure that you want. So you have the A side and the B side. In our case, we've added a little bit of blue to one side so that you can actually see the difference, to see if everything's combined. This is gonna take you a little bit. It's gonna take a few minutes to mix epoxy to where it should be mixed so that you're ready to pour. Patience is an absolute part of this. Take your time. We recommend mixing anywhere from four to six minutes and make sure there are no swirls. Everything in that cup should be crystal clear. If you don't scrape the sides like the previous point, you can end up with swirls in there that aren't gonna cure the way you want them to. Mix thoroughly, get a consistent mix with no swirls, and you'll be good to go. Just to recap on those three principles, measure really well first. Scrape the sides and the bottom, and mix thoroughly to get a consistent mix with no swirls. Another key thing is safety. So you wanna make sure you have a good pair of gloves to wear the entire time you're mixing and pouring epoxy and good safety glasses as well. If you want a respirator, that's a good idea, especially if you're in a smaller space, but if you have a large ventilated area, that shouldn't be a problem. All right, our key principles are out of the way, so let's talk about a really hotly debated thing. Should you mix by hand with a stir stick or should you grab a drill and just go to town with a drill mixer like this? Well, there's pros and cons to both. Let me take you through it. If you're using a stir stick like this, it's perfect for smaller amounts. You're gonna be able to really work that epoxy within the mixing cup and tell what's going well, what's not, where you have some swirls, and where you don't have any swirls, where you're good to go. The nice part is, not a lot of air gets introduced when you're using one of these as well. So, smaller amounts, a stir stick like this is fantastic. Now, the shape and size of the mixing stick you use is actually pretty important as well. If you are using a pretty good amount of epoxy, let's say 24 ounces, a nice paint stick like this is perfect. But what if you're only mixing up an ounce in a small cup? That's not gonna work. You're not gonna be able to get a good mix. Smaller mixing sticks like this work perfectly in that situation. However, it's really important to keep in mind the actual shape of your mixing stick. Is it rounded or is it flat? Using a flat mixing stick is gonna allow you to get to the bottom of that mixing cup and to scrape the sides a little bit easier. A rounded edge like this actually leaves a little bit of a gap where you might not get the epoxy combined that you're trying to. Just make sure that you're using the lowest point to really get into the corners and into the bottom and get all that epoxy combined. Now the downside to something like this is that it's gonna take a little bit longer. You're gonna to have to get that arm involved too. So there's a little bit more labor to this. 
gonna take a little bit longer, you're still gonna have a very good result though. That's why we recommend it for smaller amounts. Think anything up to about a half gallon's worth of epoxy. If you just take the stick and do light, small concentric circles, well, you're not really mixing everything up thoroughly. If you tilt the cup and fold things over, you get a lot better mix. The key thing to keep in mind here is rotating the cup occasionally so that you're covering all the sides. There's gonna be some uncombined epoxy on this stick. So we're gonna put it horizontal, scrape both sides, and then remix that unmixed portion of it, get a nice good mixture. Now let's say you have a larger amount. That's where this guy, this drill mixer, really comes in handy. Grabbing one of these, chucking it up into the drill, and then mixing your epoxy with it on a medium to high speed really mixes the epoxy thoroughly. Now the downside of these is a lot of air gets introduced. That's okay when you're mixing very large amounts, let's say for a countertop or for a river table, where you're really gonna take your time and get rid of that air from maybe a torch or a heat gun. But for smaller pours, smaller castings, it's almost gonna be impossible to get all that air out without a lot of time and a lot of labor. That's where I'd go back to the stir stick. These guys, large amounts, great choice. When you are using a drill mixer, just make sure that you try to keep the actual head of the drill mixer completely submerged. Pulling it out is actually gonna cause you to introduce more air. Now with drill mixers, there are different types. You have these metal ones here that have a little bit more air in between them, or these plastic paddle ones. Both work fantastic. Just keep in mind, with something that doesn't have any gaps, you're gonna push a lot more epoxy around and introduce more air. There's pros and cons to both. It just depends on your application. Now, regardless of what method you use, you might not feel 100% confident that you've scraped all the sides and you've scraped the bottoms. That's okay, I've got one cheat for you. It's called the double cupping method. What you actually do is you mix your epoxy measured perfectly in just one container with whatever appropriate stir stick or drill mixer that you have. Then you actually take that mixed epoxy, pour it into another container and do not scrape the sides or the bottom. That's gonna leave some of that unmixed material of side A and side B in the other container and give you a perfect mix in the new container you just poured into. The double cup method is a great safety if you're having problems. So to recap, whether you use a drill mixer or a stir stick like this, it's all about how much epoxy you have to mix, how much air you can tolerate adding to the mixture, and whether or not the mixing container you're using is gonna accommodate for the mixing utensil that you choose. If I use a stir stick like this, that's perfect for folding over small amounts without introducing a lot of air. A drill mixer like this, great for large amounts where a lot of air that can be torched out over a thin surface later is the way to go. Now, no matter how carefully you mix epoxy, you're gonna get a little bit of air introduced into your mixture. Don't panic, don't freak out. We've got some methods to make sure it's not a problem to your finished product. Getting air out of the mix that we've got really depends on the type of project that you're doing. If you're doing a pouring application, let's say a countertop, a river table, flood coating a piece of art, or you're doing a very thin piece of jewelry, there's not a lot of distance for that little air bubble to travel to the surface so that it will release. That's why a little bit of heat from a heat gun, a little bit of heat from a torch, or a fine alcohol mist will actually get the air out of there. Beautiful glass-like finish isn't a problem in those situations. Heat gun, torch, fine alcohol mist, and you'll be good to go. Now let's say you're doing a casting, something that has a little bit more centralized mass. That means that air bubble has a lot further to travel so that it will release. Just torching the top surface isn't gonna get it done. That's where we're gonna use something called a vacuum chamber or a pressure pot. Those two are two different things. We'll have a video on that to let you know the difference between the two and when you should or shouldn't use each of them. But all you need to know for now is that if you're doing a casting, removing air with a vacuum chamber or compressing it almost to nothing with a pressure pot is the way to go. Now something a lot of people don't necessarily know when they first start mixing epoxy is that epoxy is actually pretty temperature dependent. How easy or how difficult it is to mix has a lot to do with the ambient temperature in your garage, workshop, kitchen, wherever you're mixing up your material. The colder it is in your space, the thicker your epoxy is gonna be. It'll still mix thoroughly, it's just gonna be a little bit thicker. That's where you're gonna have to take more time all the way up to the six or seven minute mark to get a good mixture. 
the warmer it is in your space, the thinner the epoxy is going to be. That's where you can end up with a great mixture in three to four minutes. It's all about the temperature in your space and the temperature of the epoxy. Regardless of how cold your space is, there's a couple things you can do to get your epoxy up to a good mixing temperature. The first thing is get it off the ground. A lot of cold outside means a lot of cold in the earth, and that actually resonates through your concrete floor or your wood floors or wherever you are. That epoxy, those bottles sitting on the ground, will soak up that cold and will be really hard to warm up, even if you've cranked the heat in your shop to a pretty good temperature. Get them off the ground, get them elevated, and then crank the heat in your space. The second way to get your epoxy up to a good temperature is actually a warm water bath, believe it or not. Plug up your sink, turn on the water as warm as you can get it, and then with the lids on tight, put those bottles halfway submerged into the warm water and let them sit for about a half hour. Just like thawing a Thanksgiving turkey, it'll raise the temperature pretty quickly and make mixing super easy. Here's a little bonus for you. Let's talk about color and epoxy real quick. Not all colors play really well with epoxy. Water-based dyes are gonna mess with your actual cure, so avoid them at all costs. Using dyes that are made for epoxy is definitely the way to go. Just keep in mind, these guys are usually pretty potent, so only add up to about 5% of the total volume that you have to your mixture. Now, a ton of people use some powders too to get really cool pearlescent effects and interference colors. That's awesome, we love doing that here. The key here is adding just a little bit at a time. Adding too much, well, and it's really hard to take it away. In fact, it's impossible. Add a little bit at a time, mix thoroughly, and see where you're at before you keep adding. The final and most important things about colors, dyes, and powders is making sure you add them after you've thoroughly mixed your epoxy. If you add them before, it's gonna be really hard to tell if you've got everything combined. Take your time, get your epoxy mixed thoroughly, then add your colors and powders. So there you go. Hopefully that gives you a great start mixing epoxy or helps you troubleshoot a few things you've run into. At Illumilite, we're always here to help, so don't hesitate to reach out to us on any platform, whether it's social, email, or phone, and let us know what you'd like to see and if you have any additions to this video. We're always here to help. We'll see you next time.